Hi folks, I'm Scott Thrillkill, host for Hardcore Outdoors. I'd like to welcome you to my latest video, Big Hog Down. We got a lot of good hunts on this video for you, as well as a lot of tips and information on a lot of products and equipment we use every day to do what we do. First hunt up on the video is what we like to refer to as the hog drive. Hope you like it. We're going to do something a little more <clears throat> unconventional today. You'd be thinking more along the lines of a deer drive. What we got, you can't see right now, We, me and the cameraman reverse places because of the sunlight. I'm facing due west in the evening here. Anyways, facing due west, way back off here, about five, 600 yards, we got a big thicket on the back side of a slough and it's all flooded timber behind it. And back to the south, we got a big long railroad track and railroad trussle. So big hills over here and you can kind of see we're on a big hill here. And there's a big lake over here. It's a clear cut about a year old. These hogs are bedded in that bad thicket way back down in there. And we've been hunting this, this is the third day in a row. All we seen was a little wormy looking sow, you know, real skinny, she had little pigs with her and they've drained her down. She's real poor and she wasn't fit to eat so we didn't shoot her. Um, but like I said, it's a natural funnel. And then the moon's bad, we got a full moon, the hogs just haven't been moving. Two days in a row we saw that old sow and her pigs. So what we're gonna do, it's more like a conventional deer drive, but it's for hogs. And you can do the same thing if you know, if you know your property and you know where everything's at, and you know where you need to be, where the hogs are, you know, you gotta have everything just right. But we got two guys, we're gonna set up here and they're gonna, about an hour or so, I'm gonna text one of them, and they're gonna start walking down the back property line on the edge of that backwater, and they're gonna get in that thicket and see if they can't push these hogs out to us. Like I said, it's a natural funnel. You got the, uh, back to the south here, you got the railroad tracks and the trussle and flooded timber back to the east, to the west and uh, to the north here, and you can see where we're standing here a little bit to the northeast, we've got a big hill, but they're gonna come through this bottom and they feed through here. And that's what we've been trying to do is catch them coming through, but they're just not moving. So we're gonna push them out just like you do on a Canadian deer drive or somewhere up in the northwest. And we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna go here and get, get set up. And about an hour or so from now, they're gonna start pushing. We'll see what happens. I'm looking at a small pig right now. Probably one of them off that old skinny sow we've seen the last two nights in a row. It's still early. The two guys we got doing the drive, I know they hadn't started yet. I got my phone in front of them, they're supposed to text me. I feel good tonight, I feel good about this whole deal. Only problem is, you can see the sun is still a little bit high in the sky. We got a little bit of overcast and that's helping, otherwise the sun will be blinding us. So we're gonna sit here a little bit and hopefully them guys will wait to go down in there and try to drive them out. We already got one small one moving, so you never can tell. We might get a big one come out before they even get started. Don't make no never mind to me, I just want one down. Back off to the south, we got a white-tailed doe, and she is really eyeballing something. Back off to the west toward that thicket where I told y'all they were, they were bedded up, so maybe they're already out moving. That's a pretty good sign. And they're like a guard dog. They let you know when something's up. Okay, here, here comes that old sow. She got a couple bigger hogs with her right now. And all them pigs. Maybe that's a good sign of things to come. Good God, she got a herd of them with her. They're coming running out of that thicket. I don't, I know my guys hadn't started to drive yet, but we'll see what happens. That's a pretty good little water hogs.
the guys already started driving. They're down there waving at me. I knew them hogs come out of there in a hurry. I see them, but I don't see the big ones. They're right over in there. I can't believe I didn't drop that hog. I thought it was a boar, but it's a big old sow. Man, she wasn't 75, 80 yards. The cameraman thinks I may have shot over her. I just don't know how. Time will tell, we'll wait. Maybe something else come out and we'll get a shot at that too, but we're gonna go look in a little bit. Still early, we're gonna sit here a while. Gonna let these bipods down. That hole wasn't 75 yards or so. Uh, I saw the bullet kick up dirt. Cameraman said he wasn't sure, you know, looking through the camera and that sun coming down, uh, whether it was a pass through or if I missed, shot over the hole. But uh, I got the cell phone out and called my guys that's doing the driving. And he told me it sounded like meat hit to him. So we're gonna go down here and check it out. And then we're gonna come back. Whether we got the hog or not, we're gonna come back and sit down. We still got a couple of hours before dark. They're gonna make another big swing through and see if they can't push some more hogs through. Hogs laying right there, it went 50, 60 yards, so I did smoke it. Uh, Chris and Thomas here, they, they passed through the thicket here driving them out. They said there was a sure enough hoss daddy hog in there that we didn't see. But all we saw, and that's all the hogs come through was that big sow and that old skinny one with the pigs we've been seeing the last two nights. But uh, they're gonna make a, a big swing back through here and go set to the truck here about a half a mile up and wait about 30, 45 minutes to make another swing back through that thicket. See if they can't push something else out. I seriously doubt we're gonna get lucky enough to do it twice tonight, but we're gonna give it all we got. Shot it right there, right where the shoulder and the neck meet. And it exited out to about the center of the ribs on the, on the exit side. That's a sow, so it'd be some good eating. I figured that hog about 150 pounds when I shot it. She's gonna be pretty close to it too. Easy 150 pounds. That's a good looking hog, man. See what I'm talking about? Came out right about here. Good quarter and angle shot. You can't beat them quarter and shots on these hogs, man. Especially if you're bow hunting. If you ever get a shot on a hog, especially a big old boy, they got them big, thick, heavy shields on their shoulders. If you can take them behind that last rib quarter and almost all the way away from you. Take them behind that last rib, it's deadly. Still early, the guys swung back up toward the truck. It's about a half mile that way. We're gonna get right back up on our spot. Apparently it worked out real well. They they kind of cheated, they cut through. They didn't go through the show enough big ticket way back on the back side. So they're gonna make another swing. Stun starting to sit down behind the trees a little bit. We got at least an hour and a half. And we're gonna sit up here and hopefully that big one they saw will come on down through here and, and give us a shot. I'll take a two for one any day. Let's get set up. I was laying right down that hill there in that draw. 60, 70 yards from right where I'm sitting. Just wasn't no way to, to, to see it fall. Uh, 
and they was two big hogs. I don't know where that other one come from. It didn't come with that pack, but they was two big hogs with them pigs when they run through here when I stood up. And uh, that hog there plus that old skinny one was the only two big ones we saw the first go around. So, man, these things are sneaky, dude. I'm telling you, you think he's white tail is, uh, is sneaky and slip by you on drive? This is proof right here. You can do a hog drive. But like I said, you got to do your homework. Got to know the lay of land. Got to know where they bedded. You got to catch them in a natural funnel. Everything just right. Just kind of like a white tail drive. And uh, the guy said they had a show enough big one. Hoss Daddy come through there. We never saw the hog. He must have doubled back and went through the drive just like an old buck deer will do. And we're going to sit down and uh, get comfortable again just like we did before. And I'm going to turn this thermosail on because them skeeters about to eat me alive. And we're going to wait them out. See if we can get us another one. If not, I'll be really happy with what we got. I'll tell you what. I sure am glad Thermosail has been one of my sponsors since 2006. I don't know what I'd do without them, man. And you know, when uh, one of your little uh, propane bottles gets empty, or one of your pads, gets cooked out and goes bad, the skiers start tag-teaming you, even flogging you down these bottoms. But if you change that pad out, make sure you got juice in your bottle, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about no mosquitoes. We use them up in Canada on our bear camp. There ain't no way we could survive without a man. The mosquitoes come in clouds. I'll put that in my pocket when it cools down and carry it out of here. Now we're cooking. Out here killing hogs. Updating the hardcore outdoors fan page all at the same time. That's what you call high tech redneck. Well, we gave it our best shot. Running out of camera light, I don't even know if you can see me now. There, there's no way. If a, if a hog come to this bottom, we could get him on camera. But we did good. Our hog drive worked out just perfect like we planned. Hog come in 75 yards or so, quite a few of them. And uh, I put a good shot on a big old fat sow, about 150 pounds. Smoked her. She went about 50 yards. That was it. But we had another good successful hunt, and we got some meat in the freezer. It's all good now. Did you just hear that whole grunt? <laughs> Let's go and get out of here. I hate to hurt my feelings after let one walk because we ain't got no camera light. I ain't going to shoot him when we ain't got the camera rolling. We'll get on the back truck, get this hog loaded up, and we'll show y'all what it looks like. Let's go. Well, we had a good hunt. I sure am upset that the big one slipped out of there on us. But that whole gear's gonna weigh 125, somewhere in there. Good eating hog. And it's a sow too, so that's a big plus as far as eating goes. But we had a successful hunt. The drive worked out just like I hoped it would. We had our ducks in a row, everything worked out and planned out. And the guys put on a drive and Drove two big sows and a bunch of pigs right through us. They said there was a big boar in there. It was at least twice as big as this one, but it cut back through the drive and went the other way just like an old buck deer will do. We're going to come back down here. We're going to wait two or three days, maybe four or five, just whenever we get a chance to come back. We're going to do it again. And we may get something. We may not, but I'm hoping we'll get that big boar. But it's hot. It's the middle of March right now. We gotta get this hog out of here and get it cleaned up and get it on ice before we lose our meat. So we'll see y'all on the next one. We've been sitting in the stand about an hour or so. We were hoping it would be really, really good this evening. We got a we got a cold front coming in, rain, all kind of nasty weather. Just hoping these hogs move, you know, before it gets dark. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. We're having a hard time catching them out here, so we'll put out the evolved habitat, hog heaven, and beast feast. This wind's swirling like crazy in every direction with this front coming in, so 
we're hoping that's going to be our ace in the hole. Maybe it'll draw some hogs in from a long ways off. They're coming in here tearing this food plot up, destroying feeders, you name it. But they won't do it in the daylight. So we're going to sit here and, and see what happens between now and dark. We got a little bit of rain coming in. It's looking pretty nasty, but the wind comes and goes. So my cameraman over here makes the best deer jerky you ever ate in your life. So we're gonna sit here and munch out on some of this while we wait. Maybe we'll get a big one. I had to put my coat on. So leaf lodge ain't doing the job right now. The temperature is really dropping by the minute. I would imagine it in the mid 30s right now. I feel good this afternoon. We got a wind coming out of the west, right from the end of the food plot, right in our face. These hogs have really, really tore it up bad, so I bet you we'll get one tonight. Wait and see what happens. Good hog. I thought that hog was about a hundred, hundred and twenty-five pounds, but it looks like uh, she's gonna be about 175, maybe a little better. That's a good eating size hog right there. Get this gun unloaded right quick. Son, it is cold, I'm telling you it's cold. I was running around the day earlier with a cutoff shirt and shorts on. And I bet you it's in the upper 20s right now. That temperature has dropped. I'm just glad I brought my coat. That hog is, she's bred, she's full of pigs. So that's just that many less hogs we got tearing the place up out here. Yeah, that's a, that's a good eating hog too. I was hoping for a sow. They just, uh, they seem to eat a lot better. She came out. It was 102 yards after after I dropped her, I ranged it. Um, it's a perfect setup. We got a creek bottom coming around this way, one coming around this way, and they meet right back here at the end of the food plot. Thick, hard wood timber, and, you know, just thick, brushy bottoms. And this food plot sitting right in the middle of it. It's, it's just absolutely perfect place for hog. And they're tearing this food plot up, so. About time we finally got one. I can't tell you how many hours and how many days we sit here waiting. I think it was uh, the evolved habitat hog heaven added to the corn because we hadn't had them coming in before dark till then. So it was a good hunt. I'm pretty happy with it. So it's cold enough now. I think I'm just going to field dress this hog and hang it all night where the critters can't get to it, hang it up high. So we're going to get it loaded, get out of here. I'm cold.
gives us a slip. I don't understand it. Got him. He was bedded behind that big pine tree, 25 yards. We've been after this hog a long time and finally got the first shot on him. He ran, he made a circle, we heard him crash right back over here. He probably didn't go 40 yards. Let's go see what we got. Well, here's his bed. I don't know how I was able to sling an arrow through all that mess to get him, but it's about time. There he lays right there. He didn't go in, he didn't hardly go nowhere. Look at the size of this board. He got to be 250 or better. Good quarter and away shot. We've been after this hog for several weeks. About every third or fourth time we come in here, we find him, and he always gives us a slip. Every single time. The last time we saw him, we probably had 40 head of hogs around us total. I know some other big hogs. This is the one I wanted. We found him bedded up this morning all by itself. Miracle we even found him. Look at that big bad boy. He's gonna eat good. He's gonna look good on the wall too. I just don't know how we're gonna get him out of here if we didn't bring a pole with him this morning. They've been using his travel route. You can see the heavy trail where they're standing. There's a pond about 30 yards to the right side of those pits. You can't see in the footage. We've got some bigger hogs circling us out in the brush.
ran out of camera light, but I can still see well enough to shoot. Watch the right hand side of the screen as a luminot comes across for a clean pass through 20 yard kill shot. We had some kind of an interesting hunt this evening. The hogs, me and Colby found this little spot. And spur of the moment deal, it's July here in Texas, it's really hot. Uh, you can see the hogs steaming. We got a lucky, we got a uh, cool front come in. It's probably 70 degrees. We had hogs come from every direction for about two hours, back and forth. The only thing we had close enough were little small ones. The big ones just kept skirting us back and forth, grunting. We could hear them fighting. You could see little pieces of them through the brush out there, but they wasn't having it. They wasn't coming in. There were four or five good trails coming from several different directions, and they all joined up right in front of us. They were watering at this little old pond. The only trail that didn't join up was about 60 yards out, and that's the ones they all came through, all the bigger ones anyway. And it was so dark this evening it's, it's hard to get good camera light uh, late in the evening. You can still shoot, but it's hard to film it. I, I'm really not sure what we got. I had the Illuminoc on the, the bow, and I had my spot hog side on. That was the only way I was able to shoot him, you know, accurately. I took him back here in the back, in the uh, backer part of the hip, or in front of the hip, rather. Came out right behind the shoulder on the other side. He's quartering hard. He ran about 40 yards and fell over. I want to show you something else, too. I'm not sure if you can see it in the dark. Probably not. That's a spot hog sight. Can you pull in on that, Kobe? I'm not sure what you can see or what you can't. Man, this sight lights up those pins. It is incredible. It'll let you hunt another 30 minutes in legal shooting light. It's a shame spot hog don't make a camera. <laughs> We'd be using that too. So. We're going to get him out of here and get him to the processor. We had to go get a four-wheeler to get him out. We didn't bother with trying to film the blood trail. We didn't want these expensive cameras. And you can see how thick this mess is back here. It's, it's just awful out here with these hogs. So maybe tomorrow, Kobe, get him a big one. We'll see. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the first half of the video. We've got lots more exciting hunts coming up on the second half of the video, including several hunts with dogs, which is by far my favorite way to hunt hogs with, is with, with dogs. Uh, before we get started, I want to show you what we use here. We try to protect the dogs every way we can. And I, I personally use nothing but Swamp Dog Gear uh, at products, and they come out of Florida. It's all handmade. It's all custom fit. You send the measurements on your dog, and, I mean, they just make the best stuff. You can see this is a full-length cut vest. It, it goes almost all the way back to the dog's flanks. It has a built-in cut collar with a chin guard, built-in leg guards. A hog's just not hardly going to hurt a dog wearing this stuff. Man, this is just, this is just armor. Uh, it protects the dog from getting his vitals or his jugular vein punctured or cut by these big boar hogs teeth. It's, it's really good stuff. It's uh, three inner layers of duty grade Kevlar and the outer layer, layer inside and out is uh, heavy duty Cordura. So this is, this is just really, really, really good stuff. And I highly recommend if you're going, if you're going to put these dogs out on these hogs, even though they do, it, but they do it because they love it, you need to protect them every way you can if you care about your dogs. Next hunt coming up. Is a good friend of mine from New York City. His name is Angelo Brisnavales. He's been coming down hunting with me for many, many years. Back to the video. Yeah, baby. <laughs> 
It's on. This is what got him. 44 called Anaconda. <laughs> There's one big bad boy. Barely dead. Still warm. This is Ray and Marty. They were running their trot line this morning, seen a pretty good hog grouped around on the bank. Looked like a pretty good board from what they could tell. They called me up, and Roy Moore over here's got the bulldog and a couple of hog dogs too. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna turn the dogs out and see if we can't find this hog. All right, let's do it. Help him hold the head up. Get it by the ear. Paper mouth, yeah. You got it? You got it? Y'all be careful doing this. They can still hook you even though they can't bite you. That'll bow hook me pretty good. 280 pounder out here on this lake one day. That's a cold hog, boys. Well, that hog was out here rooting around on this island just like these boys said. She must have bedded down less than 100 yards from the boat. We turned the dogs loose and wham, they started baying. Hogs swam off that island on this little bitty island. Dogs caught her out in the middle and bait her up. I got to put a good dog bite on my knee, but that's about all the damage done. Good rushing blooded sow in good shape, fat. Look at that bristle on her back. Easy. She was rank. Put up a good fight. 
Here comes Ray with the boat. Let's get her loaded and see if we can't get her done before this storm blows in. Last night. 150, 175 pounds, I'm guessing. Some old deer tracks too, some fresh hog tracks. Come right Jip bays up, I hope old ice don't run in and try to kill it. He's liable to me. Yeah, break ass. She, she came out. Now she's going back in. in there. We can catch her or you can stick her with that knife. I don't care. Get it done one way or another. And watch her because she's right. She run her and bit me. Get your hands on them back legs, we'll catch them. Just stick it and be done. I can't get in there to film, it's too thick. Stick it right behind the shoulder. Oh, we got us some ass, boys. Got it caught? I got it caught. All right, hold on, I'm gonna turn the camera off. Woo, what a hunt! Come on out of there, hog sticker. My legs are still shaking. Don't let that boat run. I wish we could have tied her up and got her out here. We'd have brought that hog out alive if we'd have had the tie rope with us. Yeah. Thank God. 
I'm just glad I knew them boys in that cage would get the boat. Yeah, me too. So I don't walk back down there. Especially if it came up two minutes early, we'd have just caught that hunt. Yeah. Dang. You happy with your first knife, huh? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. You don't take it just a second when you stick out that knife. That hole would be good, too, boy. When I caught her, I was like, now how am I going to stick this hog? God, like, oh, man. We couldn't get it on film because I had to set the camera down. Alan's been fishing all morning, and I swapped with him and let him take the hog. Let's get her in the boat so we can't get in the hole. Late December, we just turned out the dogs. We got some young dogs with us this morning and two old dogs. And there's pretty good hog tracks on the bank here. One pretty big one right here. Looks like a sow and a bunch of little shoats, but maybe we'll get a look at them. Get home. Get home.
to go around and get shot on. Watch him, here it comes, guy. Watch him, Randy. That way from dog was clear. I said you ain't so <laughs> You see it hold me run me out of that treetop? That's what I'm talking about. We up on that other cold too. We can drag the hog to the brush, go back and get the boat and go around and come get it. Andy, what do you think about you? It was so, it is awesome. It was, I really enjoyed it. Run us out of that brush top, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I was looking for a way out. That's the thing that's so exciting about this. You never know what's going to happen. We walked in. They run this hog a mile before they ever bait him up in that brush top. And uh, at least a mile. I didn't think it was ever going to get here. We got in there, and I couldn't get a clear shot at the hog's head. Randy's wanting to stick one, but the hog was too rank. Dog didn't catch it. We don't carry bulldogs, catch dogs most of the time. But uh, he run me and Randy out of there both one good time. But uh, it's a pretty good hunt. We got dogs out hunting right now, the ones we didn't tie up, the old dogs. So we better get this and dressed out and throw it in the water uh, until we get the dogs caught up. Maybe we'll get another. You see earlier in the video, we hunted this same food plot with a box down, took a big sow. It's been several weeks since we've been back. It's been raining all day, it's the temperature dropping, it's getting pretty cold now, so all the acorns are about gone. All the creeks are filling up, washing food away, so I'm really hoping these hogs come out on the food plot tonight. It's a matter of whether or not they come out before dark. Uh, Scott, the cameraman, we put up a feeder down here, so it looks like somebody dropped a bomb underneath. There's a huge, huge mud hole under it. They've been mud rubbing all up on the legs of the feeder, fresh rooting around the stand. Got pretty good sign everywhere. So if they come out before dark, that's what we're looking for. We're going to sit here a few minutes. I don't want to sound too greedy, but uh, <laughs> I ain't got no problem with shooting another one if they come back out. I seriously doubt we'll get that lucky, but we're going to wait around a little bit and try it out and see what happens. What's big old sound, we'll tell you. That'd take a pretty long shot on her, too. We, uh, we ranged it from where Scott put the feeder up down here. 
from the box stand at 180 yards. We hadn't had a lot of cold weather. Um, as you see earlier on the video, we shot a, another hog at this very same location. Um, kind of the same conditions. Uh, cold front coming in. Temperature steadily dropping. Been doing a lot of raining. Yesterday was Christmas Day. And it's been in the 60s for, you know, pretty much all winter. So I figured that tonight would be a really good night. And it, it turned out it was, the, it was the night to go. So the last hog ended up weighing 190 pounds on the scales. You may not uh, think it looks this big on video. This hog is huge. It's got a huge fat belly. I imagine it's going to be 200 plus. That's what we guessed from the stand. Um, it, it's a good hunt, man. I had a whole group of sows come out. All of them were big sows. I have a couple little shoats in there, best I recall. I just got focused on a big hog and pretty much tuned, tuned the rest of them out. There's one big boar we know of in here. I would say he's going to be close to 300 pounds. He's a hoss. We've got pictures of him on the game camera. Let me show you something. This is a uh, Super Pro Pack from Nines of Alaska. I don't know if you can see it in the dark with just the lights on it, but it's all stained up and faded and wore out. I mean, we really use these. It's a pretty good deal. Comes with a diamond sharpener, and that hatchet will shave. You got your uh, boning knife, little caping knife, skinning knife, and uh, you got a bone saw. What I like is something called a muskrat. I don't know how well you can see it. See the way that blade's curved? I mean, it's sharp all the way around. That is an awesome little skinning knife. It ain't big enough for nothing, but it was, we did the uh, Asian water buffalo that I shot with a bow on video with this thing. It's, uh, it, it's a lifesaver. I've been wanting to show you all this. It's uh, something to look into if you want a good knife set. And it's, it's pretty lightweight, pretty compact. Don't take up a lot of room. And you've got knives for anything you might need at your fingertips all the time, good and sharp. And that's another thing, they stay sharp for a long time. Secret to a sharp knife is never let it get dull. Just keep sharpening it a little bit as you go and it'll always stay sharp. So That's a good hog, man. I was tickled death to get her. They eat a lot better than them old big boars anyhow. It's getting colder by the minute. I say we'll go get the four-wheeler out here and get her to the truck and get going. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I did making it. As you can see on the first of the video, we don't just hunt hogs. I operate several bear camps in northern Saskatchewan with some of the finest bear hunting and walleye fishing the world has to offer. Also, I book and guide hunts for hogs, exotics, and most North American big game species. If you'd like to book a hunt with us at Hardcore Outdoors, or if you just want to drop us an email telling us what you think or what you'd like to see on upcoming videos, just send us an email at hardcoreoutdoors at rocketmail.com and be sure to check us out on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash one hardcore outdoors. I'm already working on the sequel to this video, but we hope to see you again on volume two of Big Hog Down. Thanks for watching. Hardcore Outdoors.